Hi, welcome to Kitchen Garden Therapy. My name is Slava and today I'll take you on the tour of my medicinal herb garden. I have a lot of different medicinal herbs growing and it will be impossible to list them all and talk about them in one video. So it's going to be a series and today I'll start with the perennial medicinal herbs. And I'll start with a very special for me herb called Valeriana officinalis, which is commonly known as valerian, or some people call it valerian root, because the root is the most used part of this plant. Flowers of the valerian plant were used to make perfume centuries ago, and the root portion has been used in traditional medicine for at least 2000 years. Unlike the delicately scented flowers, valerian root unfortunately has a very strong, earthy, stinky odor <laughs> due to the volatile oils and other compounds that are responsible for the sedative effects of this plant. So yes, this herb has been always used to promote relaxation and sleep. Some use valerian root to help reduce anxiety related to stress and improve symptoms of OCD. I made a tincture out of its roots and rarely, but sometimes I use it if I can't sleep. Next is Echinacea or Coneflower. I love Echinacea so much because it's one of those herbs that are perfect to use when you have cold or flu. It reduces the symptoms with a sore throat, cough, and even fever. And I love drinking tea with Echinacea, but also I have made a tincture out of its roots, so this is another herb that has strong roots. Good thing they don't stink as the valerian. When I was little, my mom used to make a tincture from valerian roots. And we would drink it as a prophylactic measure every fall, and we would rarely get sick. Most people looking at this herb will think it's a chamomile. And indeed, the flowers do look like chamomile, but look at the leaves. This herb is called feverfew, and it's not related to chamomile. It is actually from the sunflower family. Feverfew is famous for its anti-migraine properties. It has a pain-killing and anti-inflammatory properties. And it's known that feverfew reduces the release of inflammatory substance serotonin from the blood cells and it also slows down production of histamine. And both serotonin and histamine play the role in migraines. The name feverfew comes from the Latin word meaning fever reducer, because traditionally feverfew was used to treat fevers and other conditions. Some people call it medieval aspirin. I don't have migraines, but once in a while I do get headaches. So I make myself a cup of tea from feverfew, and I don't know if it's placebo or an actual effect, but the headaches go away. And I like the smell of this herb. The leaves smell good as well, not just the flowers. And the leaves are also medicinal. So when you dry the plant, you collect the whole upper plant, leaves and flowers. And it also looks great in bouquets. So I love growing it in my garden. Bee balm is another great herb I have growing in the garden and even if it didn't have any medicinal properties, I would still have it growing because bees love it, hence the name. But bee balm is antimicrobial and it's also soothing. It often is used to treat colds and flu. Also, it has soothing effect on the digestive tract and it helps treating indigestion, bloating, nausea, and also it's antispasmodic, so it helps treating menstrual cramps and coughs. Bee balm is also a calming herb, uh, calming for the nervous system, and it's used to treat anxiety and stress. It's uh, even safe for the most sensitive patients, like children. I love drinking tea from bee balm, it's so fragrant. 
Next perennial herb in my garden is motherwort and I love this herb a lot because it's a truly woman's herb. It supports healthy reproductive functions in women, especially those influenced by tension and stress. It also supports a healthy cardiovascular system. So traditionally it's been used to bring on delayed menstruation and to ease menopause related symptoms and it's called mother's herb because it's been used to treat postpartum depression and anxiety of new mothers unfortunately it's one of those herbs that you can't just make tea out of it. I mean, you can, but it's not going to be a pleasant cup of tea. It's so bitter and stinky, I would say. Believe me, I tried. Even though it smells good while it's alive, the, the flowers, these tiny flowers, smell just like was a honey scent, but it doesn't smell good when you make it into a tea. So I would suggest if you're interested in using this herb to make a tincture out of it and then it'll be easier uh, to use this herb therapeutically this herb grows so fast and tall that i just uh, i don't know what to do with it i have too much of it but maybe it's a good thing next medicinal plant i have growing in my garden is shizandra and it's a fruit bearing vine it produces purple red berries that are described as having five tastes sweet salty bitter pungent and sour when it blooms it has these beautiful delicate flowers and it blooms in early spring this is the first year it actually bloomed for me and i was so excited i'm going to have a few berries but unfortunately birds ate them <laughs> I didn't get these um, berries to ripen for me, but it's okay, I'll wait till next year. So what Shizandra is good for? There were many studies done that uh, indicate that Shizandra may be effective against Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease because uh, it has anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective effect upon um, cells in the brain it is also good for liver diseases um, it was effective against uh, liver damage in people with both acute and chronic hepatitis also it's been used um, with menopause depression stress and other things shizandra is famous adaptogenic herb which means that it's able to help the body resists the effects of anxiety and stress and also bolster the body's defenses against whatever diseases we have and i love adaptogenic herbs my parents use shizandra a lot they just make this tonic out of the berries and they just use it like preventative i would say and they swear it works like they say it gives them strength and energy and i believe my parents <laughs> so i can't wait for this herb to grow next year i'll have to come up with the way to protect those berries so the birds won't eat them next herb is the famous one lemon balm is widely known in every country of the world i know it as melissa because that's its latin name and i love melissa for its smell it's so fragrant it smells like lemons that's why they call it lemon balm and i love using it in my regular tea blend that's like my table tea i'm using it not to treat anything just to have a tea uh, in combination with mint and linden i love drinking lemon balm every day in the evening especially because it's so calming relaxing and it smells good so the same way people have coffee every morning which i do too but the same way i have the lemon balm tea every night it's also good to have with chamomile they pair together really well its name melissa from greek means honeybee 
because bees love this beautiful scented herb and i do leave some of this herb to go to bloom in my garden but not too many because uh, it spreads so fast by seed and by root so i try to keep it under control because i don't want it to choke my other plants <laughs> like over here you can see i have goji berry a little tiny seedling of a goji berry and melissa is uh, starting to overrule this whole area so i harvested very often and of course i dry it because i love using it in my tea and the things melissa is good for are um, stress uh, anxiety uh, depression all the things um, that require sedative and calming effect next herb is the beautiful pesque flower also known as easter flower or anemone um, anemone is been used for painful uh, periods, also for tension headaches, insomnia, and uh, migraines. But it's one of those herbs that have to be used with caution. And it blooms in the spring, so that footage was from when it was blooming. Right now, this is how it looks, just leaves. Next is fennel which its seed is one of the most effective digestive aids because it has carminative and uh, smooth muscle antispasmodic properties it's very beneficial to reduce digestive cramping gas bloating have you heard of gripe water for uh, infants well it includes fennel among other herbs and fennel is great to use for uh, colics um, and intestinal spasms things like irritable bowel syndrome crohn's disease leaky gut syndrome celiac disease um, symptoms um, fennel also has anti-noisiant properties um, so it's good for to use for like um, when you have stomach flu or food poisoning so that's why I let my fennel to go to seed so I can collect as many of those seeds as I can. This beautiful herb is called wood betony and the official name is Stashis. And it's not as popular here, but in Europe it was used as a remedy for respiratory inflammation, heartburns, uh, varicose veins and other issues. And um, I like this herb to have in the garden just in case um, because occasionally uh, we may have a heartburn. So I decided to plant it and uh, make a tincture of it just a little bit um, to have in my apothecary. And next is uh, Agastache, also known as anise hyssop. Agastache was named 2019 Herb of the Year by the International Herb Association and it's used as carminative digestive for gas, upset tummy and colic pains the same way that fennel is used. It can be also used as culinary herb. Next is the famous yarrow, which is steeped in myth and legends. It's a plant that many cultures of the world have widely used. Achillea millefolium was named in honor of the Greek god Achilles, who, according to legend, had uh, widely used this uh, wood healing herb on the battlefield. I love this herb because when I was a kid, I used to forage it in fields and uh, woods around my house. Together with plantain, I was using yarrow as a bandage. Another interesting herb is Florida native edible and medicinal plant called spiderwort. Uh, stems and leaves can be steamed or sautéed like asparagus, but it's also medicinal and Cherokee people use this plant as laxative and for stomach issues and even insect bites. Um, so I'm excited to have it in my garden. Hopefully it will 
grow um, really well because I have big plans on it. This is its second year in my garden, same as this uh, sneeze weed, which has a weird name, but no, it doesn't cause you to sneeze. Despite its common name, it presents no problems for most allergy sufferers and its pollen is distributed by insects, not wind. This plant is medicinal and used to treat colds and headaches. Also, when made into a tea, um, it's used in the treatment of intestinal worms. I personally haven't used this herb yet, uh, but I'm happy it grows in my garden. Same as this uh, rue. Uh, rue is a very controversial herb. I mean, it's beautiful, uh, it's great to have, but it's one of those herbs you have to be careful with. Rue can be toxic when taken internally. Too much of it can cause severe stomach cramping. This plant is very useful as a pest deterrent in the garden, uh, even though it doesn't have a strong odor as other best deterrent herbs so i'm glad it grows in my garden maybe that's why i don't have that many issues with pests solomon seal is famous um, in treating lung disorders so last year when covid started i decided to plant this in my garden um, also some people apply solomon seal directly to the skin for bruises and boils and uh, skin uh, rednesses and other disorders of the skin and also solomon seal contains um, some chemicals that might decrease blood sugar levels next medicinal plant is also an edible plant black currant i love currants all red white black but the black one is the medicinal one to be specific the leaves of black currant they smell amazing if you just like rub the leaf and then you smell it it's so good and i love making tea uh, with black currant leaves it's very good for the immune system it boosts the immune system reduces uh, muscle pain inflammation also it's believed to improve eye function um, also it's good for lungs helps with sore throat and uh, relieves diarrhea, <laughs> eases cough and cold. Also, it stimulates appetite and digestion. So it has a lot of various benefits to um, the whole body. And even if you don't want to take it as uh, therapeutical, it will do you no harm if you just drink it instead of a tea. It actually was used as a tea replacement a long, long time ago when uh, regular black tea was not available. Another edible medicinal is wild strawberry. And these wild strawberries are from Ukraine. I brought them here and they are delicious. They are rich in iron and potassium and can be a great addition to the diet of those suffering from anemia. But not only berries are good for you, uh, the young leaves can be eaten either raw or cooked and the fresh or dried leaves can be used to make a tea that tastes delicious and it's also suitable for children. Uh, the leaves of wild strawberries are mildly um, astringent and diuretic and are considered to have blood purifying properties. Uh, herbal tea made from the leaves has been used internally for diarrhea and some urinary tract infections. Next herb is lovage, which is a cousin of parsley and uh, definitely can be used in much the same way. It does have a very strong smell and flavor and for that reason you may want to not use a lot of it in your dishes but it has a lot of medicinal properties it's very similar to uh, fennel it helps with digestion it relieves flatulence and stomach discomfort and i love growing lovage because i can use it in my cooking and also in case i need um, some help it's always there and I like to use the seeds of the lovage in my cooking as well. 
Next is raspberry. Raspberry leaves are very rich in vitamins and minerals and they contain a lot of antioxidants and um, they can protect ourselves from damage. Also, um, raspberry leaves are very popular um, among pregnant women to use um, to help with labor and uh, a lot of women use red raspberry leaves to help with their hormones and um, menstrual cycles. I love lamb's ear for those big soft fluffy leaves and because it's a tough landscaping ornamental. But there is so much more to this plant. It's known as woolly woundwort because it's a medicinal antibacterial bandage type of a plant that's good for healing of cuts. Bone set is known for a lot of different things, but one of them is uh, its ability to reduce fever, and that's exactly why I planted it in my garden. Next herb is sage, and sage needs no introduction. It's a very popular culinary herb, but it also has medicinal uses. It helps with loss of appetite, digestive problems, gas, stomach pain, diarrhea, bloating, and and heartburn. Another common herb is catnip, which is not only good for cats, but it's also used to treat nervousness and anxiety. And one of my favorite herbs, lavender. Lavender is very popular in aromatherapy and it's used in um, flower arrangements and it's very popular um, landscaping herb. Uh, or plant I should say it has a beautiful blooms it smells amazing but lavender is so much more than just a fragrant plant its most common use is for insomnia and uh, because lavender relaxes Lavender is a gentle sedative and can help with anxiety and stress. It's often used in formulas of treatment for depression. And I like combining lavender with lemon balm, melissa, and lemon verbena uh, together in tea to help me up with lifting some spirits. Mint is another popular herb and a lot of things are flavored with mint, toothpaste, mouthwash, breath mints, chewing gums. Um, people use it in their cooking. There is mint chocolate, uh, mint ice cream, mojito cocktails, and it's also very good with lamb. I love mint with lamb. But mint is uh, not only good in cooking and flavoring things, it is also a medicinal plant, very gentle medicinal plant, I would say, and it's very good for stomach issues. It's calming all of the disorders that we may have with our tummies. So if you have IBS or other things, consider taking mint. Next is a beautiful flower, the most popular flower in the world, rose. Many people love roses, but not so many people know that roses are medicinal. To be specific, rose petals are mildly sedative, antiseptic, anti-inflammatory, and even antiparasitic. They are also mild laxatives and very good for lowering cholesterol. Romantic, right? <laughs> well, rose uh, petals can be also used in, in culinary, so they are perfectly edible, of course, if they are grown without any chemicals, pesticides and herbicides. I love making rose petal jam. I also like uh, drying up my rose petals for tea. I can't wait for my passion fruit vine to bloom because passion flowers are great as an anxiety and sleep disorders um, treatment and also they're good for pain, menopausal symptoms and other things. It's also applied for the skin, for burns, and I just love the looks of passion flower. They look so cool. I hope next year it will bloom for me. Another perennial medicinal, which is also an edible, is oregano. Oregano is most famous for its antibacterial properties. 
you can also buy oregano oil from any health food store and it's a great um, herb i love having it in my garden next on my list is foxglow and foxglow is known toxic plant so please don't eat it <laughs> but it's uh, been used traditionally for heart failure and another toxic plant lily of the valley um, right now it's barely being used as a medicinal plant but in the past it has been used for heart problems irregular heartbeat and heart failure i noticed all of these toxic plants have been used for heart failures coincidence i don't know but anyway i like having lily of the valley on hand just in case it has other medicinal um, uses too uh, UTIs, kidney stones, and other. That's it for today. This was the first part of my medicinal garden tour. And today I tried to show you all of the perennial herbs I have. Well, not technically speaking, not all. There are a few that I just planted, so I considered uh, it wouldn't be fair if I start talking about them because I don't really know much about them yet. There are also a lot of uh, annual herbs that I am growing, like borage, California poppy, uh, chamomile, uh, nasturtiums, and others. So I'll talk about them in my next video, which will be called Medicinal Herbal Garden Tour Part 2.